Hey guys, Ed Bud here. Today I'm going to ask the question yet again, does running shoe weight really matter? I'll cut to the chase on this one guys. This video is going to be a bit of a discussion starter, a bit of a sort of talking point I suppose. Over the course of the last week I've received so many comments, messages etc all around weight. Some people think that running shoe weight is really important, other people think it's a complete red herring. I kind of sit on the fence between these two opinions and as such I want to present both arguments really and just spark a bit of discussion. Very quickly before we get into that, if this is your first time here then welcome. Make sure you do hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos. But if you're a regular viewer then guten tag. You know I'm a European, right? So today we're discussing the burning issue, the bottom line, the question on everyone's lips. Does running shoe weight really matter? Are you on Metallica's side of the fence where nothing else matters? Or are you more on Madonna or perhaps Freddie Mercury's side where nothing really matters? So this video is really inspired by this mammoth of a shoe. I had to actually haul my arm up there, it's so heavy. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I love this shoe. Copious cushion, 402 grams in my UK size 11 and a half, US size 12. I think this shoe makes the supposedly heavy tempo next percent. I mean, that's what people keep telling me. It's really, really heavy. I'm not so sure myself now. I can run like the wind in that shoe. It does things to me. So this one kind of makes that shoe feel like a feather, or does it? If we go back to the 1970s, you know, running shoes were vastly heavier than the stuff we've got now. We just don't really realize how lucky we are. I mean, look at this thing, guys, it's, it's, it's huge. Can you imagine that, running in this? It's actually lighter than the Ultra Boost 21. I think those shoes were pretty heavy around that point. The materials that we have now just hadn't been developed yet, but people still came up with some lightning speeds. Some incredible times, and fitness was on point. Their strength and fortitude were right up there. Nothing to do with the shoes. Even in the late 80s and early 90s, running specific shoes were much heavier than they are now. You guys will remember when I picked up that Nike Air Max 3 retro recently. Obviously, that's not made of exactly the same materials as it was back in the early 90s. But I've got to be honest, to me, it doesn't feel overly heavy on foot. It feels like a really nice cushioned shoe. But clocks in at 471 grams. That's one pound, 0.6 ounces. That's a hefty old wedge. Over the last few years, have we just become too reliant on cushion? Are we too focused on that? Is that all that matters? Fixated by midsole foams, the squash and the flex. Are we relying on those midsole foams to help stop us get injured when we should really be relying on ourselves and improving our form to stop us falling into that fate? I spend hours rolling around on the floor doing dynamic stretches, making sure I've warmed up appropriately before I go out on a run. Even when I get back from a run, the cat often comes and joins me. I mean, nobody wants that odious outcome do they of being injured. It's the nightmare of runners. To try to answer the famous Mars Blackman, is it the shoes or should it be us? Quite often recently, when I've tried out very highly cushioned shoes, I just haven't got on with them. Those vast stacks of midsole foam, it just doesn't really work for me. I've found that increasing my mileage has helped to fortify me, to build up my strength, to eat better. That's had a bigger effect, I think. Some of those high stack shoes just feel unbalanced to me. And oddly, one of the highest stack shoes I've got, the Tempo Next Percent, feels the most stable now. That one feels nimble, it feels cushioned. I think I could run any length of miles in that shoe. I think I've even got to put that shoe into the running for my half marathon time trial. Yeah, I finally lost it. Is shoe weight, cushion and foam a big red herring? Should we be more worried about the profile of the shoe, the heel to toe drop, or perhaps even the materials that the shoe are made from? After all, living in the UK here, surely weather conditions have got to have some bearing on our running shoes. In wet weather recently, this Ultra Boost 21 took on 58 grams of moisture. That was on a seven mile effort, 11.3 kilometers. Was it noticeable on foot? Not at all. Gotta say, every single thing that was on me was completely saturated. It's probably one of the worst storms I can ever remember. And I've gotta be honest, I did doubt my sanity for about two seconds. Other shoes I've tested over the course of the last 18 months have had similar problems in the wet weather. They've gained loads of weight. The Fuel Cell RC from New Balance actually, that was 
one of the worst. I don't think the TC was too much better. Those took on around about 50 grams of moisture after a 10 mile run. That brings that shoe up to a little under 300 grams. I think the Beacon 3 as well, that was particularly poor. I don't want to put a downer on New Balance here. There's lots of other shoes I've tried out that have been equally poor. I think probably the next percent in the Alpha Fly took on the least amount of moisture. But then again, there's not really much there to take on moisture. It's just this see-through mesh. What I'm trying to get across here, guys, is there's a load of other factors that we've got to consider in terms of shoe weight. If we're on a training run or a race, there's just loads of other things to take into account. You know, we deliberate over these few grams of weight, but does it really make that much difference? Do you carry your phone with you when you go running? An iPhone 11 Pro here, this comes in at 187 grams or 6.7 ounces. I mean, you're getting up towards a Vaporfly 4% fly knit in my size. Half the weight of that is the difference between the Streak 7 from Nike and the Reebok Floatride Energy 3. So just leave your phone at home and you've kind of made up the weight. Do you listen to music while you're out running? Headphones? Well, Powerbeats Pro are exceptionally light. 22 grams for two of them. But it all adds up. So if I run in my Ultra Boost 21s and leave my phone at home, it kind of makes up the difference as if I was wearing perhaps a 300 gram shoe. It's almost there, isn't it? Gotta say, running in the 21, my legs just have felt great. A few people said I must have had very sore legs after those runs, but sorry guys, gotta be honest with you, legs feel fine. Do you guys remember the head torch at all? My Petzl Actic Core head torch weighs about 83 grams. So about 2.9 ounces total. Again, that's the difference between a Vaporfly 4% Flynet and the Reebok Energy 3. Not that you wear two head torches. I mean, you could do. You could wear one forwards and backwards, I don't know. Whatever's your bag. If that makes you happy, you go for it. But I think you get my meaning, right? There's a load of other stuff that we use on a daily basis and we kind of forget about it. But it all weighs something. I mean, that Coros Apex that I've been using recently. 56 grams, two ounces. Although in fairness, I can't really feel it. I even forgot it was there the other day. I thought I'd lost it, but it was actually on my arm. <laughs> I've been working very hard, guys. <laughs> I think when it's the point of contact when we're running, you know, that last thing on our feet, they're providing the traction. I think we've got to have a little bit of movement there in terms of weight. It's the cushion, it's the contact with the terrain. Perhaps it's down to the shoe manufacturers a little bit. You know, they're constantly giving us those lower weights with a UK eight and a half. As I mentioned the other day in the video that the current average foot size, I think in the UK is now a 10, at least for men. A little bit of a magician sleight of hand trick, maybe? A sleight of foot, is that a thing? I bet there's a magician out there that just does magic with their feet. If you know of one, be sure to let me know. You know, those weights always seem a little bit lower, don't they? You look on a website and think, oh yeah, it's nice and low. That's the shoe for me. And you buy it and when it arrives in the box, you take it out and it's never as low as you thought it was going to be. It's always a little heavier, especially in my size anyway. I always feel for Andy, the FOD runner and Tim Gross, you know, those guys have got much larger feet than me. and. Some of those shoes are just colossal, you know, in those higher sizes. Certain foams just seem to send the weight through the stratosphere. Aside from the Reebok Floatride Runfast Pro, you know, 128 grams for a UK size 11 is just... I didn't even think the shoes were in there when I got that one. Overall, looking at all these shoes, I really don't feel that there's that much difference between them. Yeah, some shoes are a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, Trail shoes tend to be a little bit heavier. Does it really make any difference? Now that I've tested a huge number, I've got to say the answer is no. But everybody's entitled to their opinion. I will continue to keep the weight in the reviews just to let you know, but I think I'm going to base things a little bit less about weight and more about how much they rock. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in those comments. A quick musical interlude for you. There's one live TV performance that never gets old. I can just watch it over and over again. And that is Neil Young on Saturday Night Live. They do an incendiary version of Rockin' in the Free World. It's one of the best that I've ever heard and seen, certainly. Neil's really on form. Actually, I think he's got like a slightly different band there. I think he's got the standard guitarist that's normally with him, but I think there's another couple of guys there that maybe standing in or something, I'm not sure. But it really rocks. Apparently Neil Young 
even did some exercise and stuff before this performance to get him up to a sort of match level. You know, he did a real considerable warm up as if he'd done like a gig for like an hour, hour and a half or something. And you can really see it as well. He really goes to town on Old Black, his Les Paul. He's hammering the big speed tremolo on there. Oh, what a sound. It's just got so much energy. You can watch it over and over. And I always love the message of rocking in the free world. I think some people uh, misunderstand it perhaps, but you know, if you like rock music, you'll like it nice and loud and full of energy. This is one to check out. Neil Young, Rockin' in the Free World on Saturday Night Live. I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check it out for yourselves. Okay, thanks for sticking with me to the very end of this one. I hope it sparked a little bit of discussion. Perhaps you can have a little discussion in your house with your wife or your husband or your animals or something about shoe weight. I think that could be a, a real goer. If you haven't done so already, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. And it really does help the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.